you ser served in the Obama administration. Let's fact check the president. Were you guys looking for a meeting with Kim Jong Un or not? Well, I was in the State Department at the time, but clearly there there was no meeting request out there. I don't know why President Trump needed to even bring that up. He had a success last night, mm -hmm. and that's something he should be proud of. But President Obama didn't seek a meeting. In okay. fact, politically, it would have been very dangerous to do so. Okay, so let's move forward. You just admitted as a Democrat that you think it was a success for President yes. Trump. Uh, let's not focus on the negative and throw stones at Democratic and Republican administrations, but let's try to build on that. What do you think went wrong in the Obama, Bush administrations? Uh, what is going right now, and how do we build on it? Yeah, this, it, what happened last night, it, it can't be stated strongly enough. It was incredibly valuable to have the president meet with Kim at the DMZ and kick off again, we hope this time a very successful process for negotiation. That's what needed to take place. We have had negotiations on and off for decades with the North Koreans to no avail. Uh, we did have an agreement in the mid 90s in the Clinton administration. Then President Bush, un under the guidance really of John Bolton, uh, jettisoned that agreement. The agreed framework in 2002 and 3. Trust is at a minimum. So, what the president did last night was hopefully rebuild some trust, but he really needs to get Get his team and the North Korean team going in a repetitive process to get an agreement on black and white in, 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 in real time. So how does he do that? What would be your advice to this administration? Because uh, yeah. I mentioned the media at the top as well, and they've thrown their uh, share of stones and said that this was a uh, seat of the pants diplomacy. It was going to blow up. It seems like the president has proved some of those critics wrong. On the other hand, seat of the pants diplomacy may not work moving forward when you're trying to get the details you're talking about. What's your advice to them moving forward? Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought that up. We can't re re result in, or we can't go backwards in, in conventional thinking. And I'm glad that the president didn't think conventionally about this. But there is a critical piece, which is to bring the negotiators to the table. It can't be a Trump Kim only negotiation. That will not work. There are too many details. There's too much technical requirement. Sanctions on our side, nuclear on their side. It's going to require Steve Began, uh, the president's representative, to sit down as soon as tomorrow mm. and begin to hash out a game plan for meetings, timelines, and goals. The goal of denuclearization, the goal of peace, and how they're going to get there. Uh, that is what's going to win. We haven't had that in a repetitive way where the top level has blessed it. That's the unique feature of this negotiation, and that is a valuable asset, but it can't be squandered and just be the two leaders meeting and nothing else. Joel, last question. Uh, Harry Kazianis, who you know well, uh, was on a moment ago. Uh, he said we should be clear-eyed about the fact that this whole process could take a decade of winding down North Korea's nuclear program. But he was bullish on the idea that he thinks there will be some sort of uh, agreement in principle that we can build on for real within a year. You agree with that? Yeah, I, I do. And, and that brings up the question of verification, which is to have an agreement and then to ensure that it's implemented where international mechanisms are engaged as well and that's verifiable. That is critical. So Harry's right in making that point. And we need to make sure that whatever is negotiated has strong verification embedded within it, because that's oftentimes been a stumbling block in the past.